Last year, we rescued over 400 California sea lion pups. These were animals that were starving to death, that were going to die without the intervention of SeaWorld's rescue team. We are here round the clock, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, to give these animals the help that they need. And my favorite part was when you got to return it to the wild, a healthy, nourished animal that you knew you were giving a second chance at life. Blackfish makes a lot of false claims, and when it comes to caring for our animals, I know better, I work here. The truth is that we couldn't love these animals more, and every single day we are so committed to their health and well-being because that's what's important to us. That is the most important thing, is making sure that, that they're healthy and happy, uh, not only for them as individuals, but for dolphins in their future. I would just ask people to please do some research and ask some questions and and really, I mean, there's nothing could be further from the truth. It's our passion, we care for them. Uh, it doesn't matter what time of day it is, we're here if they need us, um, and, and we love them with all of our hearts. John Hargrove was a very dear friend of mine for many years, and there's this footage in Blackfish of John with blood all over his face, right? And it, if, if you didn't know anything about SeaWorld or what goes on, and you just watch this movie, you think, oh my god, a killer whale did that to him. No, he hit his head on the side of the pool, just jumping in, in a shallow area. So it had nothing to do with the animals at all. Conservation is not sitting back and criticizing. The activists sit back, they raise a lot of money, they spread misinformation and they criticize. That's not really doing the work that is required to save these animals. And there are people here who are around the clock caring for these animals that have been rescued, rehabilitated, many released right here on our coastline. The animals that need our help, Really, that happens all hours of the day, and SeaWorld is committed to being there and responding to those animals anytime, anyplace. There are people here at SeaWorld who will not be home for Christmas because they're out rescuing a manatee. That is the reality of conservation. I remember when I was a child and I came to SeaWorld and I saw the killer whales, the dolphins, and the sea lions, and now, as a trainer, I get to see kids have those exact same emotions as they come and they get to feel the spray of a killer whale. Just the other day, I had a school group come up and take a picture right next to a dolphin and seeing the amazement on their face. I hope to pass my passion for these animals on to the next generation so that we can do everything possible to make sure these animals thrive. The movie Blackfish asserts that we use food as the only motivator to work with our animals. And it's simply not true. Uh, our animals receive all of their food, all of their nourishment, regardless of how they perform throughout the day. They do not have to come into the show to be fed. Uh, in fact, one of the bigger challenges that we have day in and day out, both with the whales, with the dolphins, with all of our animals, is holding them back and keeping them out of the shows. Much of their reinforcement, much of that food comes for just, hey, sitting back with me, hang out with me, have fun back here. The shows are inherently reinforcing for them because they enjoy doing them. I didn't know it was going to happen, so I wasn't expecting it. And um, one day they say, OK, Sam, you're ready to go. Come on, you got it. You're going to stand on the whale. You're going to dive off the whale. The whale's going to swim under you and pick you up again. And then you're going to do a, a perimeter ride around the pool. Good. Keep moving. Ride a pool slide out. They just told me to go do it, and I did it. Wow, I, did, I just rode a killer whale. In the movie that you see with the woman swimming with the killer whale, that was me. That wasn't her. That was two years of my career leading up to that point that they twisted and took from me. The video that was used in the film was of my very first time getting in the water with a killer whale. It was one of the most amazing moments of my life and I worked very hard to get to that point in my life. I studied biology and psychology 
I specialize in behavior analysis. I spent four years getting my degree, and then I spent several other years getting experience at other facilities before I even came to SeaWorld. The one thing that I want people to know after watching the movie is that it's not true. The thing about Blackfish the movie is that it is definitely not a documentary. It's an expose. It's an opinion piece. Uh, and that's what I struggled with when I, when I first reluctantly agreed to do the interviews for the movie because uh, it was told to me that it was going to be a balanced piece, that it was going to represent many sides of the issue. And if you've seen the movie, you've seen that's not the case. You don't even need to know about the issue to understand that this movie has a singular agenda. It represents a, one person or one organization's opinion. Simply put, the movie just wasn't true. I mean, there, there's not only uh, disinformation in the movie, but there's also blatant falsehoods. And that's unfair, and that breaks my heart. We have over 1,500 zoological team members uh, working at our parks. So it's not just animal care specialists, keepers, the folks who are working with the animals on a daily basis, but it's also veterinarians, researchers, scientists, the animal trainers who watch the animals so closely and then really enrich the animals' lives by training behaviors both for health practices as well as for exercise and mental stimulation. We work tirelessly every day not just to care for these incredible animals, but to understand them better. It makes us all better conservationists. It allows us to understand the animals and make the right decisions on behalf of these animals in their wild spaces so that we can really protect the planet that we live on. Hi everyone, I'm Kelly Flaherty Clark, Curator of Animal Training at SeaWorld of Florida. You know, I've worked with and around killer whales at SeaWorld for more than 26 years. And ever since the first day of my job, I've known that my safety and the safety of my team members has been SeaWorld's top priority. Four years ago, we lost a dear friend at SeaWorld. And within moments of Dawn's death, we changed our protocols around how we work with all of our killer whales. And within hours, we were having meetings to dis discuss facility modifications and protocol changes. And those meetings have led to a more than four year inward look at every single thing we do with and around our killer whales and the facilities we care for them in. And that has led to a lot of new changes. We have pneumatic gates that allow us to remotely operate them. We have elevated walkways around the pools, easy access to the whales when they're free swimming. And we have an entire floor of one of our largest pools that can raise to the surface. And now we also have new equipment for our trainers. This is Justin, he's one of the animal trainers here at Shamu Stadium who works very closely with our killer whales. And now that our, and when our trainers are working closely with the killer whales, they're going to be equipped with this very sleek, custom designed, brand new technology vest. The vest provides the trainer with access to air and buoyancy. What we have here is basically an entire scuba set without the weight um, and access to a nice two-stage regulator. And this equipment is the end result of more than three and a half years of collaboration with safety experts, engineers, and our own trainers. And every time they came back with a prototype, we were able to put it to the test. And that test was around our animals. We asked the trainers, go on out there with the whales, make sure you can be maneuverable around them. This doesn't impede your ability to interact with them. And the tests worked just fine. So now we're ready to show it to everybody. We're ready to put it into part of our protocols. So when you come to SeaWorld, you will see our trainers who are working closely with our killer whales donning this new sleek equipment. Growing up in California, I was always taught that you should cut up six pack rings, to dispose of fishing line, not use plastic bags because all of these materials can enter our ocean environment and affect the animals that live there. And how this affected me personally is when I started rescuing and rehabilitating animals, I went out and rescued a sea lion that was a juvenile. And this sea lion had a six pack ring around his neck. And as the animal grew, the plastic didn't. So it caused quite a traumatic injury to his neck. I didn't think this animal had a chance, but we brought him back to SeaWorld and because of our staff and amazing veterinary team, we were able to rehabilitate the animal and return him back out into the ocean. My hope for people when they leave SeaWorld is that 
they care even more about these amazing killer whales than they did when they first came. That these magnificent creatures touched them the way that they've inspired and touched us. And to realize that we love these animals and we care about these animals very much. And what we do really matters. My very first introduction to the rescue program at SeaWorld was a very unique opportunity and a once in a life opportunity. The mammal department that does the rescue program had rescued a California gray whale calf. What was amazing about the gray whale is they're one of the first species ever taken off the endangered species list, but not a lot is known about gray whales. So not only was this an opportunity to rescue an animal, but it's, it's not just about rescuing them, rehabilitating them, and returning them to the wild, and that's what I learned. It's also about learning from this animal and what can we do to make a difference in that population and help its ecosystem and sustain that animal. I believe everyone is entitled to their opinion as long as it is an educated opinion and you seek out that knowledge and you see both sides before you make a decision. What has really personally affected me about Blackfish is all the kids that watch this movie or their parents watch this movie and that's all they know and that's all they see about SeaWorld. Um, and now these kids don't even get the opportunity to understand why it's important that we have these animals and what these animals in this park can do to inspire these kids, like myself, to someday, because I was that kid, to grow up and help with conservation efforts and rescue efforts. One of the things in particular in Blackfish was they focused on Kasaka and Takara and separating them. And in the movie, they show this baby killer whale, and they imply that, that Takara was a juvenile or even an infant. And that's just something we would never do. Um, Takara was an adult female that had a calf of her own. And the calf actually went on the transport with her mother because we don't want to separate moms and babies. Keeping them together is critical for their success. So. It's just, it makes us seem like this evil place that rips mothers from babies, and we just don't do that. Blackfish just isn't real, you know? Why would, why would I work for a company that does the things that, that they say in that movie? I mean, you know, I've de devoted 23 years to this company. I, I'm a mother of four. I wanna be a good role model for my kids, you know? I, I'm proud of what I do. Be clear, there are details that we can learn about killer whales at a park like SeaWorld that we simply could not understand or even be able to study in wild killer whales. One research project that's ongoing right now, it seems very basic, and that's to take photographs of the killer whales at SeaWorld. Through this photography, biologists are able to standardize their approach to measuring wild killer whales. Through research, we're able to better understand the killer whales that live here within our parks. And these killer whales then act as ambassadors for their wild counterparts. What does SeaWorld mean to me? SeaWorld is my life, has been my life. It's been my family. There's, there's nothing in the world that compares to having a rapport and a relationship with an animal like this. But there's also nothing that compares to watching the impact that that relationship that you have has on the public. It's, it's, it's as exciting and inspiring for me to watch a baby killer whale be born as it is to watch you know, the six-year-old or the 10-year-old in the audience. I've had people tell me that their, their children uh, were so affected by what they saw that they wanted to learn more 
about whales. Where do they come from? And when they find out they're from all oceans of the world, then they care about all of the oceans of the world. So that what they see here and how it impacts them changes the way they behave outside of SeaWorld. Our male killer whales do have dorsal fins that are bent. The dorsal fin is not an indicator of the animal's overall health. The dorsal fin is a structure like our ear. It's made of similar material and it doesn't have any bones in it whatsoever. So our whales spend a lot of time at the surface and accordingly a tall heavy dorsal fin without any bone in it will slowly bend over uh, and assume a different shape. There's a statement in Blackfish made that we separate our calves and mother killer whales, and, and that is far from the truth. We recognize the importance of family bond. We currently have Katina with two of her babies in the pool, and uh, we recognize this, and we keep them together as a family. Uh, we also have the largest database of, of information about calves and how they relate with their mother, and when they do their independence, when they nurse, when they stop nursing, all that we've learned from having these family groups together. But uh, as a zoological professional, it is not true that we separate our mothers and calves. Killer whales raking each other, bottlenose dolphins, using their teeth to interact with each other and the resultant marks, those are rake marks. The suggestion that's been brought forward is that this is somehow abnormal, uh, that this is an indicator of a problem. The truth of the matter is, is that all toothed whales and dolphins rake each other. This is how these animals interact with each other. That's absolutely the case. You'll see it in bottlenose dolphins and killer whales in the wild. And in fact, our killer whales have been living here for a long time. They are still killer whales and they still interact with each other in a normal way. And rake marks are just part of that. Every single day, I get to make these one-on-one -on -one connections with dolphins and children. And I have children myself and to know what it means to this little bright-eyed child to meet a dolphin and then say, I'm gonna go home and start recycling. You know, to watch the parents and, and watch how they're just beaming with excitement that their child is getting to have this experience. Having these one-on-one -on -one connections with individual people matters to the big picture of our world. If there was a child that watched Blackfish that had never had an opportunity to visit a zoo and, and they all of a sudden are, are asking questions, honestly I would say good for you. Ask questions. Do your own research. Don't just take something for face value. I'm impressed that you're asking questions. Find the truth. On average we rescue about 100 to 150 animals a year. Last year there was some sort of event, something that was going on in the ecosystem with California sea lions and they were starving to death. 
Myself and the team I work with rescued over 430 animals last year. And that commitment of time, effort, and energy was huge. From sunrise to sunset, 20, and if they needed it 24 hours a day, we were here taking care of those animals. So I know what we were here doing and what's making a difference for these animals every single day. I had the opportunity, I was blessed to work with quite a few babies. Unless there was an absolute critical medical need, um, we never made the decision to separate babies from their moms. That, you know, we never ever moved a, a calf unless the mother had already weaned it. I heard those same claims in, in the movie uh, Blackfish and I, you know, scratching my head going, I don't know what park these guys worked at, but uh, not, not where I worked. at SeaWorld for 23 years is because every day I see that child that is touched and, and inspired like I was. I see myself. I was that child and I think I may be making a difference. That, that child may dedicate their lives to caring for animals, protecting animals. That, that feels like a privilege. Our killer whales are unique. They are incredible animals, and they are world recognized. People love killer whales, and so do we. We love these animals because in many cases, we've been working with them for decades. We have certainly dedicated our lives and our careers and a lot of our personal time to their health and well-being. Our approach to killer whale care really epitomizes our overall animal care and welfare programs. It starts with our preventive health care program. Whether they're healthy or sick, our killer whales see their doctors once a month, and that's the bare minimum. Compare that to your dog's annual physical, which happens once a year, or even how often you go to see your doctor. We know that these are incredible animals. We know that they are paying attention to their environment and that they have evolved complex behaviors and smarts to survive in a foreboding environment like the ocean. So we take that to heart in our care programs. We create dynamic, stimulating behavioral sessions, challenging the killer whales to solve problems as they learn new behaviors. We create, through our animal trainers, uh, environmental enrichment devices, puzzles, and toys for the whales to use. They work with trained animal behaviorists on a daily basis to create a dynamic and stimulating environment for them. My reactions to John's book are, I think, overwhelmingly sad. He says one thing one day and then something totally else the next day. And the story changes based on who he's telling the story to. Now people are seeing something that just doesn't accurately reflect what we do. Former SeaWorld employee John Hargrove is making some serious claims today about the company. But many of those claims are contradicted by statements Hargrove himself has made in the past. So which John Hargrove should be believed? Let's take a look. In his new book, Hargrove writes, SeaWorld says its animals receive all of their food regardless of how they perform. That, he says, is false. John Hargrove's statement that SeaWorld deprives their whales of food is frankly the most ridiculous statement, uh, I think, in the entire book. We never, ever withhold food. I can tell you, this is something that I hang my career on. John knows this is not the case, and in fact, a couple of years ago, he tweeted that SeaWorld doesn't deprive the whales of their food. So it's not just me that disagrees with what's in John's book, it's John himself that disagrees with what's in John's book. Contradictions like this are a pattern for Hargrove. In his book, he says shows at SeaWorld offered the whales a, quote, temporary escape from their horrifically sterile lives in captivity. Yet in a 2011 interview, he said the opposite. Trainers, he said, quote, vary their days with their animals, ensuring that they would be stimulated throughout the day. It's kind of strange now to listen to John be critical of and say the things he says today, which within a couple of years ago, he was saying something completely different. He, you know, he loved the animals he worked with, he cared for them, 
He helped nurture them. He had relationships with them. And now he's saying that didn't happen at all. Today, Hargrove says he left SeaWorld because he was disgusted by what he called the company's corporate greed. But in 2010, he said the opposite, praising the company, writing it's staggering the amount of money that they have spent and are spending for in-depth reviews and facility design changes. I am, he wrote, very proud to be a SeaWorld trainer. Today, Hargrove says he was brainwashed for years by SeaWorld. He says the working environment there had a, quote, cult-like mentality, even claiming SeaWorld tapped his phone and had him followed. He describes his decision to leave the company as one of breaking free. His former colleagues and supervisors, however, tell a very different story. In April of 2012, uh, there was a night I received a phone call at probably 10 and 10.30 at night um, where John was telling me that he and another trainer the day before in the morning um, had basically violated a major safety protocol. I only know the story because uh, it was told to me by John. There was a mistake made with the gate. One of the locks on a gate was not properly put in place. So John was um, at that point moved to the Sea Lion Stadium and um, that did not sit well with John at all. The story that John told me was that um, the management made a decision after this incident with the gate uh, to move him to the Sea Lion Stadium and he said in his words that day I left work and I never came back. In my opinion, John didn't come back because he wasn't permitted to work with killer whales anymore. And that's not really in the book, um, but that's a big, big part of the story. It was a choice of his to leave SeaWorld. Perhaps not for the reasons that he's put in his book. He was a killer whale trainer. This is what he loved. This is what he lived for. This is what he was good at. Um, and in his mind, SeaWorld took that away from him. In his mind, we wronged him. With all his contradictory statements, for many people, knowing which John Hargrove to believe can be a challenge. To see him say things that are so contradictory to his passion, what he was so uh, driven to do, it's hard for me to see that. It's hard for me to see my good friend talk about things that I don't, e I don't even know who that person is. To find out the facts about SeaWorld for yourself, go to AskSeaWorld.com.